There are several articles and videos on the net claiming that the Burj Khalifa Tower in Dubai is not connected to a wastewater treatment plant by a sewer system, but that instead the sewage is transported away using trucks. You might be surprised that the tallest building in the world, which is a spectacle in every other way, does not cater to this serious dilemma. Continue watching the video to know how the Emirati icon manages the waste waters from the building and click the bell icon for more updates in the future if you haven't yet. Now to understand why the Burj Khalifa doesn't have a sewage system, we need to take a look at how Dubai was built. All of Dubai's wonders were funded by the government in an effort to draw tourists and businesses into the country. So in order to attract new investments, Dubai follows a policy of having very lenient taxes. In fact, they don't have any sales or income tax. Instead, they have slowly managed to develop other sources of income. But like most governments, Dubai's leaders have to take loans when it comes to starting new projects. And this is precisely what they did when they started work on the Burj Khalifa, a project that cost a whopping $1.5 billion. Now, this isn't the country's only expense. They also expanded the Emirati fleet, built hotels and spent a lot of advertising. As a result, Dubai has accumulated a lot of debt. The current amount stands at $80 billion, which is about 77% of their GDP. Now, this number doesn't look as bad when you compare it with other major countries like the USA or Japan. But the problem with Dubai is that it doesn't have a stable source of income. All of its earning is dependent on investments and tourism. As a result, the 77% GDP to debt ratio is much more volatile than in other developed countries. On top of this, the country was also hit hard by the credit crisis of 2008 and had to take a loan of $20 billion from the Bank of Abu Dhabi. Dubai was in need of some serious financing and Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the ruler of Dubai, was adamant about not using income takes to generate revenue as it would further decrease Dubai's popularity and would reduce the investments pouring into the country. As a result, the government set out on completing Burj Khalifa as the structure would put Dubai in the limelight once again. As the government was rushing to complete the project, they decided to forego a sewage system as it would bring an extra cost and it wouldn't be profitable. This doesn't mean that Dubai doesn't have a sewage system. Obviously, the city has one, but all the extra waste from this ginormous building could not have been sustained by the current sewage setup. As a result, the building was not connected to the city's sewer system. But where does all that human waste go? It can't just disappear, right? Well, let's take a look. After a hearty lunch at the restaurant atop Dubai's world's tallest building, you excuse yourself from the table and proceed to the restroom. You flush the toilet without even thinking about it. What happens to the poop? Any person would think the world's tallest skyscraper, which requires an incredibly advanced architecture and technology to attain its heights, would have an equally outstanding sewage system. Unfortunately, that is not the case since it is not connected to a municipal wastewater treatment system, as we mentioned earlier. So this means that when you defecate in the Burj Khalifa, the excrement is trucked out of the city. Trucked out? We are astounded at the inefficiency of such a system. To transfer wastewater to a treatment facility outside of town, one of the world's most sophisticated skyscrapers employs an archaic system. So keep in mind that if you visit and use the Burj Khalifa's bathroom, someone will have to collect your poop and transport it out of Dubai. Terry Gross of NPR interviewed Kate Asher, author of The Heights, Anatomy of a Skyscraper, in November, and she discussed what happens to sewage from Dubai's Burj Khalifa and other tall buildings. In Dubai, there are several towering buildings, many of which are not linked to a local sewage system. Construction appears to have outrun installation of such a crucial component of any multi-storey structure, ostensibly with clearance from the Municipal Planning Department. There is some form of a system, but it is incapable of handling the output from an 828-metre tower. So what actually happens to the waste when it is flushed from the top floor? For one thing, the trash shoots down pipes at 122 miles per hour, which is faster than the average speed of most mainline trains in the world. The important thing to remember is that the poo reaches terminal velocity, much like a skydiver. So, after roughly five stories, you can theoretically go as high as you want. It does, however, bounce back up at the bottom. Therefore, the drainage must be constructed to prevent this. 
To reduce waste bounce back from pipes running down several stories of buildings, the bottom of the stack, the primary vertical pipe carrying the load, must be at a particular angle. This permits waste to flow around a bend and then horizontally down a drain, where the flow reduces, a process known as a hydraulic leap. However, for buildings with more than 20 stories, the lowest two toilets must be on their own stack, else things can go horribly wrong. If this second system is not in place, flushing a toilet at the top of the building will result in something extremely nasty pouring quickly and forcefully out of the ground level facilities as a direct result of bounce back. The initial speed and volume of liquid flowing, as well as the position of pipes running from toilets into the main stack, all have an impact on this. Anyways, your number one and two then go 160 stories at rapid speed, gravity broke by a clever series of bends in the pipes that slows it down. These pipes, by the way, are soundproofed because no one wants to listen to the travelling trash all day. Anywhere else, the waste would end up in a septic system before making its way to the municipal wastewater treatment facility. In greener buildings, it may even pass through a network of filters before being reused for landscaping or additional flushing toilets. But this is not the case at the Burj Khalifa. Some unlucky individuals, or more likely several, gather the wastes in trucks. Experts believe that at full occupancy, that might be equal to a good 13 tonnes of human faeces every day. But the Burj isn't at full occupancy, so let's lower that figure. Let's reduce it to 8 tonnes, a very cautious figure. That's still a lot of shit, and you have to admit. But there is one more factor to account for. More wastewater generated by showering, cleaning your teeth and so on is also added to it, so it does sum up to 13 tonnes of waste to manage. Because the Burj Khalifa was erected in such haste that no one considered where the excrement would go, those poor individuals had to transport this stinky garbage to a wastewater treatment plant where they frequently have to wait in line for up to 24 hours to dump their smelly truckload. The inefficiency of such a system is astounding and it begs the question of how architecture is more than just constructing a beautiful structure. Architects must also examine the building's influence on the rest of the city and how it will interact with it. It's all well and good to construct the world's tallest structure, but if you have to remove the garbage using inefficient and expensive vehicles, you have failed. Well, anything is possible when you are looking to cut costs. So that is all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you all next time.